Hello everybody. Uh, it's been a while since my last tutorial and since then two important things have happened. I got a new video card that supports DirectX 11 and I bought Fraps. So you know what that means. Another tutorial. Uh, I've been playing around with this all damn day and I'm just trying to get a basic idea of what I can do now with DirectX 11. Uh, I think I have all the features somewhat figured out so I feel comfortable with them uh, I have a custom star shaped bokeh as you can see over there oh look look at how it looks like in game probably gonna look like crap because I bought a really cheap DX11 card oh and I'm also running anti-aliasing which you can also do from the post op process now but I don't think you need DX11 for that just want a really powerful card but yeah everything looks uh everything looks pretty good in terms of quality I like the the look and feel of it. Only thing that's missing is uh, a little bit more post processing. So I'm going to show you how I managed to do that. First and foremost, probably my, I started this a little bit early, but uh, everything I did I could just explain to you. Uh, gonna find a nice angle that I want to take this a screenshot of this level at, and it's just gonna be a quick dirty screenshot. So, you know, take a screenshot with your computer if you don't know how to do that. Uh, just look at your keyboard and where it says print screen on your keyboard, just tap that button and paste it into Photoshop. I mean, seriously though, if you don't know how to do that, come on. Okay, so we have this screenshot inside of Photoshop. Beautiful, pretty Photoshop. And I want it to feel more nighttimey, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So, what I'm going to do is first I adjust the curves. That's like usually the first thing I would go for. I'm not sure how other people go. I haven't, I'm self taught, so if I'm doing this the wrong way, let me know. But uh, the curves is what I would go for. And I changed the RGB curve to make it a little bit more bright near the higher level colors. And then I went to the blue curve because I also wanted to push that out a little bit more. And then I went to the green curve because I wanted to push that in a little bit more. Again, if you, it doesn't make sense, what I'm saying is because I am I taught myself, I don't know how to explain it. The next thing I go to is brightness and contrast. Uh, also, for the record, this symbol means I'm adding these all from here, which is the best way to add these for, what I'm, for the method I'm showing you, because they'll transfer over. Do not use filters, because filters are a waste of time with this method. With this method. If you want to use like special things like edge detection or have it have a paintbrush feel you're gonna have to figure out um, shader ways to do that so get somebody who's handy with a shader I'm not really that tech savvy yet but uh, I upped the brightness and contrast a lot of contrast and a lot of brightness I'm not sure how it's gonna look in your screen but hopefully it looks good on yours and let's see what else can I add for the lols I'm gonna add a photo filter where we got that at there we go and right now it's on warm. I don't want it to be warm. I want it to be cool. Ooh, very nice, very nice. I don't know which one I like more. This one makes it look like it's underwater. So I think I'm gonna go for this one and crank the density up a little bit. There we go. So we have three filters on so far. As you can tell, it gives it a much different look and feel than what it previously had. What else can I add? Just for kicks and giggles. Hmm. I really don't know. Oh, you know what I can do? I can add... I, I've always wanted to see if this works. Uh, I add a solid color fill, and I change it to exclusion. So it gives it kind of a... faded photo look. I'm going to change the color tint to blue. And the way this works is like... If you set the colors too bright, it's going to invert everything. But if you set them dark enough... It's gonna level out a lot of things. I like that look. I really do. Yeah, that's a good look. Uh, let me drop the photo filter on top of everything. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna keep the photo filter down here. And last but not least, I'm going to probably should uh, also the order of these things is very important, but I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining this. I just want to get this uh, figured out real quick. 
you're probably going to be like, why did he do all that if he's just going to get rid of the color? Well, here's the reason. I'm going to change the, holy crap, the blend mode, there we go, to soft light or hard light. Yeah, soft light works best. And you can see it makes a big difference. And because the difference is so freakishly huge, I'm not trying to go for extremely creepy, but if I were, mission accomplished. Okay, so we have those all figured out. So now, you're probably wondering, how the heck do I get this image into Unreal? Well, you don't. Well, what you can do is take these settings and kind of copy and paste them into Unreal. For that, we go to... And this is me being a noob. I didn't know how to record. Forgive me. Ah, Facebook. Personal info. Don't look. Um, let's see. Where we go? Our favorites. We go to the UDN. Unreal Defense Network. I'm joking. It stands for... Actually, oh yeah. Unreal Developers Network. We go here and look up tone mapping. Hopefully this works. This is my first time trying it, to be honest with you. Ah, there we go, color grading. Ha! Now I know what to call this tutorial. In case you haven't noticed, I've been ab avoiding the term. Because I had no idea what it was called. And so here we see how awesome color grading can be. We could get a large variety of looks going, actually. Also, come to this page on your own time, and you'll get a little bit more info. Actually, a lot more info than what I'm giving you. But, let's see. We have all this stuff, and it looks amazing. But... Oh, I haven't seen this before. I'm going to come back and look at this, actually. Because I have not seen this part before. That must be new. But what we're here for is this puppy. So, we're going to right-click, save link as. And I'm going to save it to some place real quick. So, I can just drag and drop it into Photoshop. Eh, I can do that. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so it's saved. And I'm going to show it in the folder because Chrome is awesome. And now what I'm waiting for is Chrome to find it, or Windows to find it, my bad. It's not Chrome's fault anymore, it's Windows. Sorry, Google. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this picture, these bottom two layers, so that way they don't screw me up in the future. And should have been found by now. So drag and drop this into Photoshopy. Uh, select, copy, and paste into the, into the one that you're using. And as you can tell, in fact, let's crop this real quick. Trim. Yeah, trim. Okay, that didn't work because I didn't have transparent pixels. Let's try this again. There we go. Real-time recording is awesome. Alright, so, as you can tell, there's quite a bit of a difference between these two. This one's the regular default color grading, and this one is my pimped out, I'm going to call it Thriller. Yeah, Thriller. So, what we're going to do now is save this as, you know what, i got to double check. I'm pretty sure we save it as a TGA, but I'm not sure. in some uncompressed file format that the en engine can read okay so um this is probably gonna sound really stupid but I can't think of one other than bitmap so I'm gonna save this as a bitmap just to be safe I figured that I just wanted to be sure I was gonna save it as a target cause that's my when in doubt file format but let's see. I'm just gonna call it thriller grading. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, everything looks sexy. Now we're gonna go over to back to UDK. Open this puppy and import. Thriller grading. Yeah, yeah. Um it said that it needed to be in inside of the color group. LOD group, my bad. I forget which one already. Is it render target? 
Oh, color lookup. There we go. That's the one. It's been a long time since I've done this. Okay, so. Now that we have this guy in here, let's go to our post process properties in the world view. So, we have our rendering and make sure this guy is selected. Ah, uh, starting to get a headache, so I gotta make this real quick. I can't find it though. It's making me upset. Search. There we go. Color grading tool. Ah, thank God for search features. All right, and as you can tell, that did absolutely nothing. Well, I'm gonna have to figure out some other day how to get the HDR tone mapping and an LUD texture working at the same time. I do not not understand why they're not working at the same time, but again, if anybody knows about that, please let, help me out because I am effing lost. But uh, to conclude this tutorial, everything that was a uh, cool looking and oh, I got rid of it, I forgot. But uh, everything that was cool looking in Photoshop will be applied over here after one click, hopefully, and success. So as you can see, it looks a lot more blue. Looks a lot more awesome. Well, considering that uh, my world pro post process train's not working anymore the way I wanted to, so I'm not getting any more bokeh. But that aside, everything else looks pretty, pretty tip top. Uh, let's see what this looks like in game. Probably should have built the map. And yeah, it looks just like you would expect it to. So, thanks for watching this hopefully short tutorial. I'm probably going to edit the crap out of this. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hopefully now that I have fraps, I'll be coming out with more videos. I'll also be making a gaming channel, since I do love the game. Uh, recording for views and money might inspire me to do a little bit more gaming sad excuse I know but again thank you for watching and have a blessed day hey guys I know I said the video was done but I just learned something new and because I'm such a nice guy I thought I'd share it with you uh, found out how to have my color grading and my bokeh enable at the same time basically over in the material the post process train I needed to enable it to use the world settings underneath post process effect and so it will allow me to use the LUT thing that I use in here or probably in a post process volume I haven't tried that in a while but it would allow me to use the LUT texture only drawback is even though I could set the type of bokeh I mean whoa well yeah the type of bokeh the type of blur I have over here I have to change the settings over here which you know it's not too much of a drawback it's just something to remember and somewhat inconvenient I think also because I chose to use the world setting yeah pretty much everything used over here so gonna add some grain cuz I like maybe grain yeah okay so you just gotta use both of them again I guess um, hopefully that would be an easier way in the future but thought I'd share that with you and let's see how this looks like in game I love that view look at how good that looks man don't hate I like that. I like that a lot. I'm very happy to be a game person right now. Because this makes me happy. Only thing I wish, and I know I can do this, I'm just very lazy because this is actually from something I probably know. You know what? No, screw it. I'm probably going to do it. Because I know I can do it. Only thing I, what I was going to say is uh, I'm probably going to make a, a depth based shader, which means the further away something is the noisier it gets but when you're close up on it there's not a lot of noise on it akin to you know actually taking pictures with a camera so I'm probably gonna do that and that's probably gonna be implemented in the UDK because that's what the, they do when they find things that are awesome that's how it was with the light shafts which are there for ah oh, look at that pretty but yeah let me stop being uh rambly and finish but yeah hope that helped bye oh subscribe subscribe damn it